Arguable, there are too many of these companies, thousands in fact. So when we're talking about the big market players, the ones that may have been affected by this news yesterday, they're somewhere near the top of the pile. Just how, how big is this new entrant issue in China? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, this is a big problem in China. The overcapacity issue, I, if we look at the um, capacity utilization rate, it has dropped from 58% uh, a few years ago to only 48% to this year. This is the whole industry situation. Uh, if you look at the number of uh, EV uh, new stop companies, starting from 2015, uh, the, there are over 100 companies announced a plan to get into the EV uh, industry. And we calculate that still over 50 actually launched a plan to produce a car. And you look at today, I think less than 10% of them survived. Uh, but that's not even uh, end yet. Uh, we know that starting from uh, last year, there's a new wave of uh, um, um, the IT industry starting to get into the car industry, including Xiaomi, Huawei, and a number of other mobile phone manufacturers. So we're going to expect there are more and more uh, um, the IT gems or IT firms uh, get into the business. Uh, therefore, we will see even more EV new startup uh, companies in China. So that's the very unique uh, phenomenon uh, globally. Uh, it's only in China we saw so many uh, companies get into the industry. I think that's raised the concern from the government. Yeah. And this warning that we had yesterday on Monday from the information minister, it is just that at the moment, it's a warning, right? But what would be the next steps in terms of enforcement of a crackdown? Um, if you look at the government's concern on the oil industry capacity, it's been in the last two decades, um, there always government's warning regarding this uh, problem. Uh, it's talking about consolidation uh, two decades, okay? Um, but um, you have to look at the, the industry structure. Uh, Chinese industry, the car, car industry company today is being occupied by the global company and the local uh, companies together, with the international brands still uh, occupied uh, over 60% of the market share. Um, almost all the global brands compete in China. So I guess the top-down uh, consolidation is just not the way in China. It has to be borne up. That means uh, driven by the market itself. We have seen number of companies um, bankrupt in China last couple of years, including local companies like uh, Zhongtai, um, like uh, Li Fan, uh, and we also see some uh, uh, other international brand pull out from China, uh, Suzuki, uh, Renault, and uh, you look at uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, FCA just shut down their plant in Guangzhou. So I think this is a happen in China today, and uh, I don't believe it will be driven by the government regulation as forced by the market force itself. Right. Good morning, Jonathan. We're joining in this conversation. So, you know, just to be more specific, who will go with whom, you think? Because you highlighted some names out there. Um, I think um, um, we, with this um, uh, consultation po policy guideline, I believe that would actually benefit the newcomers, you know, in China to get their production license uh, is quite difficult. Uh, with China's uh, crackdown on overcapacity, I think the new EV startup actually going to benefit from that. That means they will, they will be more easily to get a uh, production license and get some um, production facilities. You know, previously we look at um, Xiaopeng, Neo, uh, they all get their cars produced on other OEMs facilities. So for the next wave of newcomers, I think that will that probably will help them.